creative designers welcome again to my channel in case you are new here my name is gift first i want to apologize for staying away for so long but now we are back and we are better so in today's video i'll be showing us how to make this reversible peplum blouse with 720 degrees flare if this is something you love to learn stay tuned as i'll be showing us a detailed video in this tutorial okay so in case you've not hit the subscribe button please do well to do so encourage me by doing so hit the subscribe button the like button and also the notification bell so you can always get notified when we post a new video without further ado let's move straight into today's video Welcome back creative designers. So for this tutorial, we'll be making use of two different African print fabric. Okay, you want to make use of two different African print fabric. And here on the table, these are the fabric I'll be making use of and they have one point one and a half yards each. If you have the plus size, you can make use of two yards. Okay, two yards. But for me, I'll be making use of one and a half yards each of two different African fabric and you need your front length measurement and your waist circumference my front length measurement is 16 inches and my waist circumference is 28 inches these are just the two basic measurements you need now here on the table i've gone ahead to trace out my front bodies this is just the only thing you need okay just the front bodies so i have my three by three neck width and neck depth is a basic neckline but here I mistakenly drafted two and a half years. So I'll just make two and a half inches rather. So I'll just increase it to three by three. Okay. So the neck width is three inches and the neck depth is three inches. Okay. Now that you've gotten that, the next thing you want to impute is the width of the pinafore. Okay. The width. Now remember is a pinafore. Okay. So we are going to be dividing our waist circumference by eight to get that width. You need to divide your waist circumference by 8. If yours is 30 or 32, divide it by 8. For me, mine is 28 divided by 8, and I got 3.5 inches. So from my center front, I'll be going in by 3.5 inches, okay? Now, you could also make use of your darts leg, I mean your boss pan, to get the width of your pinafore. You could make use of your boss pan, you can make use of your waist divided by eight after you've gotten that from the shoulder tip come in by one inch like so okay so i'll be going in by one inch like so and then the next thing i'll do is to connect that one inch line to the waist line like so okay i'll just connect it to the width on the waistline like so you could also start from directly from your shoulder tip if that is what you want but for me i just want to go in like so by one inch okay so I'll just label this part so that I will not get confused by the time I'm transferring it to fabric. Creative designers, this is just the only thing you need to make this. So the next thing I will do is to go ahead and cut this part out, okay? This part of the pattern is what I'll be cutting out and this is what I'll be transferring to fabric. The other part I'll be discarding it, okay? So this part is what you'll be transferring to fabric eventually. Now, before we transfer this part to fabric, I would love to show us how to calculate um, the basic measurement and the things you need to get your flare. Now, a full circle is 360 degree flare. A full circle is 360 degrees flare, okay? Now, to get a 720 degrees flare or peplum, it means we'll be cutting two full circles, which is the same thing as two 360 degree flare i don't know if you get what i'm trying to say okay so it means you'll be cutting two of it because two times 360 of course will give you 720 if you're making 1440 just divide it by 360 to to determine how many 360 you'll be getting okay so now to get a full circle you're going to be dividing your waist circumference by 6.28 now this is a constant is a constant actually there are two ways to cut your flare but this is the method i'll be teaching us for a half circle which is 180 degree we use 3.142 which is pi but for a full circle we'll be using two times pi which is two times 3.142 and that will give us 6.28 okay so now you'll be dividing your waist circumference by 6.28 
for me i got 4.45 and i would just approximate that to 4.5 inches now this 4.5 inches is known as your radius and what is your radius this is where your waist circumference sits on eventually okay now that you've gotten your radius remember this is just to calculate a full circle but we'll be cutting 720 degrees flare which means to get that 720 degree peplum, we need two full circles. I've said that before. Okay. Now, in order to get that, what you're going to do is to divide your waist circumference by two. Now, the reason why you are dividing your waist circumference by two is that at the end of the day, whatever you get must be able to accommodate your waist circumference. If we make use of the initial 4.5 times, we will have more than. Okay, so you have to divide your waist circumference by 2. Sorry, I made a mistake here and I said it's 19. 24, 28 divided by 2 is 14, please. It's not 19. Because eventually, I went ahead to use this measurement and I discovered it was a mistake. So I will be correcting that as we proceed in this video. But now let's assume that I got that 14 inches divided by 6.28 i will just impute that measurement like so okay now to know the amount of fabric we'll be making use of before now we can just fold our fabric and then cut out and then discover eventually that we have wasted a lot of fabric but using this method you'll be able to understand how much fabric you need to put on fold so for us to get that you need to determine the length of the peplum for me the length of the flare i'm use i want to do here is eight inches okay so you add eight inches to the radius you got before so let us say i got three inches so eight inches plus three inches of course will give me 11 inches now you'll be joining this flare to the upper part by half of an inch and you'll be turning the hem in, the hem line by half of an inch that's another half one inch so by the time you add that one inch to what you have before you will get 12 inches now also the flare at the sides you'll be joining them together by half of an inch on both sides and that is one inch so you have 13 inches at the end of the day but please remember i told us that I made a mistake by using 28 divided by 2 which is 14 okay so i'll just correct that later so now i'll be transferring my patterns to fabric first i'll be cutting my back the back part of this pinna four the back part of this pinna four is actually cut on fold i'll be using that pattern to cut out the back part it is cut on fold but the only difference is that i'll be raising the neckline of the back by about 1.5 inches okay i want the neckline on the back to be higher than the neckline of the front okay the front neckline so i'm raising it up by 1.5 inches which is what i have here can you see now after i have gotten that the next thing i'll do is to go ahead and add my half of an inch seam allowance stitching allowance round like so okay so I'll add half of an inch round and I'll also add half of an inch to the neck area like so, the neckline area. When you have done this, the next thing you're going to do is to go ahead and cut this out. Remember, this is for the back and the back is actually cut on fold because the back does not have a zipper and it does not have any joining. Okay, so now that we've cut that, the next thing I'm going to do is to remove my patterns i'm just showing us again that the neckline of the back is higher than the neckline of the front now that i've done that i'll just put this on my fabric again to cut out the front area now the front area is going to have um i'm going to be splitting or splash slashing through the front area but the back is on fold okay so this front area i'm going to be adding half of an inch to the center front and I'm going to be cutting two pieces, okay? I'm going to be cutting two pieces for the center front. But remember, the center front has a joining at the center, okay? It has half of an inch, rather, joining allowance, okay? So now the next thing I will do is to go ahead and slash through the center front just like so. Now remember, we are slashing through because there is an opening at the front of this pinafore okay so now the next thing i'll do is to go ahead and label my fabric please make sure you do this as you do not want to get confused by the time you start to join your fabrics together so i have my back and i have the front 
pieces so i'll just join them together like so and take them away now remember i told us i made a mistake why calculating um the radius for my flare okay i i mistakenly said 28 divided by 2 is 19 please it is 14 so i'll just redo that so that we can understand everything i'll be doing here okay so 720 degrees flare is actually 360 degrees flare into two places okay so that means you are cutting two 360 degree flare like i said i made a mistake before by saying 19 please it is not 19 28 divided by 2 is 14 so it was when i finished cutting this peplum that i discovered that it was way too big way bigger than what i actually expected okay so i had to redo it so now what you're going to do is to divide your waist circumference by two my waist circumference is 28 inches divided by two and that is 14 inches okay so now this 14 inches it means we'll be cutting 360 degrees flare using 14 inches in two places okay We'll be cutting two 360 degree flare using 14 inches in two places okay now to determine the uh, the radius we'll be making use of it means we'll be dividing whatever we got here by 6.28 remember i told us it's a constant okay when i divided 14 inches by 6.28 i got 2.02 .02 now this is different from the 3.02 that i got before that was a mistake so 2.02 .02 now is our radius now to know the amount of fabric to put on fold remember you have to first of all determine the length of your peplum so the length of the peplum i'm working with is eight inches so the to determine the amount of fabric to put on fold, so that you don't waste your fabric you're going to add your flare the length of the peplum that is the length of the flare you add it to your radius and then you add your stitching allowance of one inch that is hemming allowance for the upper part you are going to be joining the peplum at the upper part and you're also going to be joining it on the lower part by half of an inch then you add the stitching allowance at the sides at the sides of the flare so eight inches plus 2.02 .02 will give me 10.02 .02. by the time i add one inch and another one inch for stitching i'll have 12 inches now to show us how to put this on fold, just measure that 12 inches. The upper part of your fabric must be on fold. Measure the 12 inches and then put it on fold again. Do you understand? Now the next thing you're going to measure from the tip of that fold, measure the radius. After getting the radius, which is 2 inches, then go ahead and impute the length of your peplum. And that is what I'm doing here, okay? Impute the length of your peplum. After that, impute half of an inch for joining your peplum i don't know if you get that now remember i told us that we'll be joining this peplum on the upper part by half of an inch go ahead and impute the half of an inch at the upper part with this method you are not going to waste your fabric at all now i told us i made a mistake before i used three inches and that was a mistake so the, what i did was that i went ahead to rejoin the radius i cut out using my zigzag stitch now i will be re-imputing the correct measurement so from the tip of the peplum i will be measuring two inches like so from the tip of my fabric rather i'll measure the radius which is two inches like so the two inches for the radius you got okay first impute your two inches like so after you have imputed the two inches then impute the half of an inch at the upper part for joining remember we have calculated that when we were calculating the amount of fabric to put on fold now from the first two inches line impute the length of your peplum okay so the length of my flare or the peplum is eight inches okay so from the first two inches line now from the first line that's where i'm taking that measurement from i'm going to impute the eight inches like so and then i'll connect it together using a curve okay using a smooth curve i'm just rechecking that line just to be sure that there is no mistake of any sort okay from that line again can you see impute your half of an inch for joining now you don't have to worry because you've already calculated that when you were calculating the amount of fabric to put on fold okay now after doing that i'll go ahead and trim off the excess this excess is as a result of the fact that i made a mistake by using the wrong measurements to cut out my peplum in the first place okay so now that i've corrected that this is what we have the next thing i'll do is to go ahead 
and place this directly on the on the new fabric i want to call remember we are cutting two i only use this to explain to us so i'll place this on the new one just like so i could also decide to use the measurement i have on the fabric is to still give me the same thing but just so to conserve time i'll just place it on tight on top of the fabric like so and then cut it out remember the upper part is on fold please it is on fold okay so this is the radius that i just cut out like so and then i'll go ahead and cut out the lower part just like so this is as simple as abc but if you have any question you can always drop it in the comment section okay so now i will remove my pins and then i will show us what we have at the end of the day so these are the two 360 degree tiny flares okay they are tiny now but we are going to be joining them later on okay so now these are the two peplum the flares and this is the upper part for one part of the fabric okay now that we've gotten all this remember the back part is on fold remember it is on fold so everything i have here is what i'll be transferring to the other fabric so i'll be cutting out the exact same thing i have here on the other fabric okay i'll be cutting out exact same thing exact same thing good so now i'm done cutting out the uh exact same thing on the other fabric i have the two peplums for each fabric i have the upper part the back part and the front part for each fabric okay so now the next thing i'll do is to go ahead and infuse my hair stay interfacing on all all of these uh patterns i mean all those fabrics we've cut out also you want to cut out your band or the rope which is about three inches wide and times two of your waist circumference okay so now i've gone ahead to impute my infuse my hair stay interfacing on all the fabrics i cut out on all of them all the front the back the peplo i mean the flare for each everything i've inter i've interfaced everything with my hair stay interfacing so now i'm going to put all this together and join them together on the shoulder part so i will put the back part the front part on the back part like so and then go ahead and stitch them down on the shoulder line by half of an inch at this point i was done joining and then i opened up the stitches by using my pressing iron on both fabrics now on both fabrics make sure you open up open up your seam lines it just helps your work to be very neat and flawless okay so now that we are done doing that the next thing we are going to do is to place the two fabrics i mean the two yes the two fabrics now right side facing right side make sure they are matching up on the shoulder line right side facing right side match them up on the shoulder line pin them down take the other side as well match them up on the shoulder line pin them down okay please you need to work with a lot of pins as you do not want to make mistake by the time you're joining okay the next thing i'll do is to go ahead and pin down the sides like so so i'll pin them down from the lower part all the way to the other part from one end to the other end pin them down pin the other side that is the center front area i'll pin them down now i did not add interfacing to the lower part of this fabric about two inches i left about two inches that is because i'll be cutting out that part eventually and so i do not even want to i, I ran out of interfacing so i didn't have enough interfacing to put there but it's not necessary as i'll be cutting that out now the next thing you're going to do is to go ahead and join them together join everything together except the lower part join them together by half of an inch for your neckline area just to give it a flawless finish by the time you're done you can put your hemming gum like so you stitch your hemming gum around this with half of an inch around your neckline now around your neckline now i'm done joining everything together with half of an inch can you see it is only the lower part that i did not stitch as we'll be turning this out eventually from there now that i've stitched all this down i'm just showing us what the hemming gun looks like the next thing we are going to do is to give the neckline area tiny tiny notches now these notches will allow the neckline to relax eventually when you are pressing on it now the next thing you're going to do is to go ahead and you know reduce the volume of the stitches you have around this area now this is because you do not want it to look too bulky so just reduce it like so okay reduce the inches by i mean the stitches by half of 
0.25 inch by the time you are done trimming that part turn it to the right side from the opening we left earlier so at this point i was done turning it out and this is what we have so you will discover by the time you turn it out that the center front area has some kind of a knot, okay? So you want to put your scissors or your loop turner into that and then bring it out from that part. Also make sure that your shoulder line are matching up. Make sure they are matching up. This is very, 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 very important, okay? So now the next thing we are going to do is to work on our flares, okay? Now remember the flares were cut on fold what i'll be doing is just to slash through one end of the flare you're just going to slash through one end just one end one end of each flare now so for this part i'll slash through this part and i've done that i'll pick up the other part the other flare now for each fabric i'll slash through the other end like so can you see now i'm going to pick up one end that is one of the flare and put it right side facing right side on the other flare and join it together by half of an inch i will repeat that for the other fabric okay so i'm going to slash through one part of the flare like so can you see i will also slash through one part of the other flare and then i'll pick up the two ends join them together by half of an inch at this point i was done joining can you see and i've opened up my seam lines like so so i also did the same thing for the other side i opened up my seam lines using a pressing iron can you see so now the next thing we are going to do is to join these two flares together we want to place them together okay so to do that you pick up the center front i mean the center point of each flare can you see pick up the center point of each flare join them together using your pin this is very important very important okay so now that i've joined the center points together the next thing i will do is to pick up the four edges that is the four sides can you see now this is optional this part is optional if you want to leave your flare this way it's totally fine but for me i just want to create this circular shape around the lower parts of the flare i want it to have this circular shape around the lower part so i'm just putting up the four areas i mean the four parts the four sides of the flare i'm putting them together like so and then i'm just creating that circular shape there's no definite measurement for this just create any shape that suits you it's fine so as you can see this is what i want at the lower part of my flare so now after we are done doing that the next thing you want to do is to take this to your sewing machine and join them together with half of an inch of course you need to close up the flares on the lower part okay and to have a flawless finishing, I would advise that you pin your flares together as you do not want one part to be longer than the other part. So now I'm just pinning down the strategic points, the center points, I'm pinning them all down. So now with the aid of my hemming gum, I will add my hemming gum to the lower part before stitching. Now the reason why I'll be doing this is because at the end of the day, we are not going to be top stitching on this flare and we are not going to be adding crinoline. So please, if you're making this reversible peplum blouse, there's no need to use crinoline. You will, it will not come out nice, please. So now I'm done top stitching. Uh, I'm done stitching on it. I'm done joining them together. And this is what it looks like. Okay. So now that we are done joining with my hemming gum too, I'm going to give these tiny, tiny notches please this is also a very important step it helps your flame to relax perfectly by the time you want to press on it okay so just give it tiny tiny notches round like so and be careful so you don't cut through your stitches okay so now that we are done i'm going to turn this out from the opening of course that is the only way we can turn our flare out to the right side now as you can see i'm turning it out this way I'm also going to be telling us we are not top stitching on this. I keep iterating on this. We won't be top stitching on it, please. We, we, there won't be any need for you to do that. So now that we are done opening this up, I mean, turning it to the right side, it's time to move straight to the pressing iron. I'll be showing us the pressing technique because there is a technique for this. Now I'll be showing us how to press on this. Just take a look at what I'm doing. Make sure that the the one side of this of the of the flare is not showing on the other side that's just what i need us to 
understand also you need a steam iron if you don't have a steam iron you can make it of a dry iron with a spray bottle just make sure there is steam you're applying steam as you can see the white part is not showing on the black part and the black part is not showing on the white part it is very important so take your time when pressing on this take your time if it needs you to repress over and over again please do so as you need to have a flawless finishing okay so now that we are done pressing the peplums the next thing we are going to work on is the upper part now take a look at the way i'm pressing this down please take your time when pressing on this take your time as you can see none of the other part is showing on the other side okay so the best way to do this is as you press on one side flip it over to the other side and press on it now on the neckline area this is a very delicate area remember you have your hemming gum there and the moment your heat touches it it's met immediately so you want to take your time make sure there is no mistake make sure you arrange your fabric properly can you see this is looking flawless and beautiful already that's just what i thought to show us now remember i said we'll be adding a band that is a rope to this so i'm just measuring two inches from the lower part of my of my uh, of the upper part which is which i'm going to be cutting out eventually as we'll be attaching our band or our rope to read eventually okay so now that i've cut it out here is what the peplum looks like can you see how beautiful flawless this looks okay so now i will head straight to the sewing machine and just secure the upper part by running a stitch on top of that area like on the upper part i'm going to be running a stitch around it just to secure them together now for your rope which will eventually serve as the band for the upper part you want to measure about times two of your waist circumference this rope is about three inches wide and it is at least times two of your waist circumference times two of your waist circumference make sure it is not lower than that it can be more or make sure it's not lower my waist circumference is 28 times two that is 56 i have about 60 inches there so after you have gotten that you could attach your interfacing on the waistband too but i ran out of interfacing so now you want to notch the center point of your of your rope or, or your fabric now the, the band rather notch the center point now take the right side of the band attach it to the right side of your peplum okay make sure you are taking the exact same fabric that matches the other part of the peplum now determine the center point and join them to the center point of your peplum now you are going to be sandwiching the peplum in between the two ropes okay can you see what i'm doing the peplum is in between the two ropes okay the two band or the two rope call it whatever you want to call it okay so you just keep pinning them down now notice when we go to the end of the peplum i did not stop you just have to continue pinning down the rope or the band till you get to the end you repeat the same thing for the other part as well sandwich the peplum in between the two ropes like so and then you keep pinning till you get to the end of the rope or the band at this point i was done pinning down so you're going to stitch from one end like so stitch it all the way down with half of an inch stitch it all the way down and stitch it to the upper part now leaving the other part of the rope open okay so at this point i was done joining can you see this is what i was talking about you just leave the upper part open as you'll be using this to join to the upper part of this blouse okay so now i'm just going to bring it out this way remember it has to be flawless so this is what it looks like the next thing i'm going to be doing is to head straight to the pressing table to give this a very beautiful press now i said beautiful and when you are pressing on it the next thing you're going to do is to tuck it in by half of an inch so on each part of the band that is on each band you are going to tuck it in by half of an inch i'll be explaining to us why you need to do this because at the end that is what will help you to finish up your blouse perfectly okay can you see the half of an inch i was talking about so you have to press it in like so okay press it in press in half of an inch on both sides of the band okay press it in till you get to the other side can you see now that we are done doing that the next thing i'm going to do is to bring the upper part of this blouse okay it's time to finish this up so first you want to determine the center point okay now we advise that you stitch on this area please stitch on it just run 0.25 inch stitch straight stitch on it just to keep it in place so determine the center point and pin them down like so 
Now, after you have determined the center point, also determine the center point on your peplum. So, of course, the center point is going to be that part of the peplum where we join together. Now, determine the center point. Now, you're going to take the upper part. Make sure that the part facing you is the same part on the peplum facing you. That is, the part of the, the color of the fabric facing you on the peplum is also the color of the fabric facing you on the upper part. So, what you're going to do is to tuck it in. Just tuck it in in between the two band or the two ropes. That was why I said we should press in half of an inch. Okay, this will help us to finish this properly. Can you see? At this point, you will discover that you are almost done with this. I mean, this is the only way to finish this up. So just tuck it in and keep it in place by pinning them down. Okay, keep them in place by pinning them down rather. Tuck the other side in as well. Take your time when doing this. And please, when you are tucking it in, make sure it does not exceed the half inch line. Remember, you press in the band by half of an inch. Make sure the upper part does not exceed that half inch line. It can be lower, but make sure it does not exceed it, okay? So in order to tuck in the other part, of course, you have to flip the entire fabric this way. Flip it to the other side such that the other type the other fabric is facing you now can you see and then tuck it in like so just tuck it in like a pocket <laughs> so tuck it in now the center front is going to start from where the peplum ends so you can eyeball it or you can trace it out it's fine just make sure it is starting from where the peplum starts from or ends as the case may be tuck it in and then pin them down okay tuck the upper part into it and pin them down so at this point take the other side as well tuck it in and then pin them down tuck it in yeah i have to say it again tuck it in and make sure it does not exceed the half inch line okay tuck it in and then pin them down now the next thing you're going to do is to make sure that everything is aligning you don't want one part longer or shorter than the other so now you're going to head straight to the sewing machine and run a very tiny stitch around it okay on that part on the upper part you're going to run a very tiny stitch very tiny stitch around it from one end to the other so now this brings us to the end of this beauty that we created can you see how flawless and beautiful that is so that is just what i thought to show us it is a very easy outfit to make can you see how beautiful it is the upper part the lower part one side is not looking ugly everything is looking all fine beautiful and flawless okay so now i want to say a big thank you for staying true to the end of this video and that brings us to the end of this video so in case you have not subscribed please hit the subscribe button like share comment and i will see you in my next video bye